So we have a monitor I got off eBay for actually more than I even agreed to pay for because the shipping price got jacked up like 30 bucks after I bought it. So I ended up spending 100 bucks on this fucking thing when I bid it on it for 20. And the reason I went for it is because I made the money on eBay so it didn't hurt as bad. But that's uh... I did not want to pay that much for a monitor that didn't work. But yes, this doesn't work. So we're going to see if I can uh, get her going on the simple side. Because if it's complicated, I might need to look up information I don't have on it. And this knife's so fucking sharp I can't even find the tape, so... Oh, this knife's too fucking sharp. It's slicing through the entire damn box. I've never actually used this knife before. What is this knife made of, like, super-powered laser beams? I better put this thing away before I hurt someone. See, that's how sharp the knife was. I wasn't trying to do that. Alright, I can't get this out with one hand. I'm going to switch cameras. Because uh, the drivers on it won't work on my Windows 7 kernel computer. So I have to use my older Windows XP computer to communicate with it. Because I don't have an SD card reader. So I guess I need this thing after all. But I better be careful. Yeah, I already sliced up the box a bit. Come on. Oh, this is a bad idea. I'm using such a sharp knife. Yeah. That is one of the other pluses. This is it comes with the original box. <sighs> Which I don't know why, but I like things in the original box. I should not have used that knife. Because I put extra gouges in the original box. Well, it's not in the best shape. Huh. Wait, there's an option for a green phosphor? That'd be interesting if it had the green phosphor. Oh, wow, it's got the little punch cards. That's a first for me. Oh wow, this has got the original plastic wrapping. Somebody must have just found this, tried to turn it on, and you know, I'm hoping it's something like the power switch or a fuse, because I don't want to sink a lot of time into this. I just want to use it. Okay, this is a little screwed up. All these knobs aren't knocked in like my old one. The old one's a lot more yellow, too. Hmm, smells weird. I think it's the house it was in. Just trying to make sure it doesn't smell like burnt copper or something. When I plugged it in, I heard the high voltage come up. This thing works. It's got a raster. I can still see the burn, a little bit of burning from what it was used on. Which I had a good CRT for it anyways, but... Let's get a video signal on it. This thing might just work. Oh, it's been a while since I've heard that. This was my first... The I, reason why I got one of these is this is the first TV I had when I moved to the state. I had this thing, this model of monitor, hooked up to a VCR. And that was my only TV for like a year. Moment of truth. And if we get nothing here, I'm going to immediately suspect the solder joints and the AV ports. Because that's how my old one died the first time. Horizontal refresh rate. Horizontal sinks at the wrong rate. Can I adjust that from the outside? I don't think I can. Wait, vertical's wrong too. What? I'll play around with this a bit. 
So I adjusted the uh, hor the vertical hold, and uh, I don't know why the horizontal went back into place. I did knock the thing, and that must have been enough. It has a the horizontal. If I remember correctly, on here the horizontal that was weird. The horizontal um, hold on here is a uh, a tuned slug type deal. Now I'm gonna play around with this and see if I can get the best possible picture out of it. The CRT looks a bit more worn down than my old one, I think. I remember my old one having like that just most absurdly great picture. And then again, I can see the little composite artifacts, so maybe this thing is perfect. So this thing does not work properly, it just, its condition improves a little after runtime. Now, I'll turn it off and on real fast, you see it has complete sync issue, but that, that goes away. Uh, when I first turn it on, this thing runs goofy for a couple minutes and then it stabilizes. In fact, this is the best picture I've seen on it so far with the grids. You can see the image is curved up here, and um, it right at the edge of every bump, it's knocked over a few uh, units of measurement that are small. No, it ain't a loose connection, or that would have done something. Well, if we go to our color here. Oh, that looks all fucked up. I also feel like there's a very poor amount of uh, difference between light and dark in here. Man, those color bars look pretty bad. Hmm. Here's a weird one. I'm going to touch the horizontal pos position knob. What the fuck? That scared me because I wasn't expecting the TV to do anything. Touching the horizontal position knob now. Trying to turn it to the right. We just completely lose sync. Hey, wait. Now I have the sync back. Hey, that, that's how it's supposed to be. Huh. I'm poking around with the controls like my problems are magically going to go away without doing anything, and I got a weird result here. Weird indeed. I've never seen anything like this. We're hor it's like oh, it's like we're horizontally locked for a second, but everything still looks fucked up. Although we lost that lock, there's more than one issue with this thing. Uh, the when I a second ago I tried turning it on, it did nothing, but I picked it up and it came back to life. So that's probably still going to be some solder joints, and that really should be fixed because if that's a solder joint where the power cord cord goes to it, that could be the death of this thing. Because, you know, uh, a poor connection is a high-resistance connection. A high-resistance connection puts out heat. That could cause a big problem. As the resistance gets higher, it's going to put out more heat, and that's going to start a chain reaction. Stuff could get arky. Oh, I feel like this has been getting brighter over time. See how fucked up we look today. Oh, wow, look, that looks so much better now. Was it just me dicking around with the settings over here? Oh, fuck. What the hell? What the hell? What the hell? Let's just get inside this damn thing already. So, as you know, I have no service information for this. Uh, we're going to do this as simple. Uh, start the easiest possible things first. So I'm going to look for any physical uh, connections that are iffy on the PCB itself, and I'm going to clean and rotate every uh, variable resistor on the unit itself. And I don't remember this having a red, that uh, red pasty glue there. And actually we can uh, check to see if my memory is wrong because, you know, I still have the CRT and faceplate to my old one. And... This one has brown glue on it. And a Philips CRT. 
What kind of CRT does this one have? Phillips as well. Oh yeah, because Phillips bought out Magnavox. Phillips Magnavox, of course. What? The fuck? Why the fuck is my Dremel not running? Jake, you break my fucking Dremel. You son of a bitch. Is the outlet dead? Oh, what the fuck? <sighs> I got two of these fucking things. Ghetto lathe. Now I got a sharp soldering tip. Now I can tin it. Don't know if the camera is picking that up. It doesn't like doing closer range focus. Yeah, I think I can see it. You can see some failing solder joints on the video port there. The, the that's the that's that the that failed in both of them in the last monitor I had, and on some of the controls as well. On the off chance somebody's watching this video because they're having issues too, to remove the chassis, all you gotta do is take out two screws, one here and one here and the transformer slides out you can unplug that and then the whole chassis will come out because the uh, the thing that holds in the transformer also holds in this plastic piece for the power cord after this ordeal this thing doesn't seem to work at all anymore it doesn't even uh, acknowledge when i press the power button and it's a doesn't really have an ic in it so um now i have tested for continuity uh, on the on both fuses between the power line and uh the, the traces nearest to them they go to and the power switch and it's good 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 now i'm suspicious of the yoke because these older sets do not function without the yoke it is the yoke is where it does all the horizontal bullshit like it'll work without the vertical won't work without the horizontal so i'm curious about the yoke now I'll have to follow me some traces around but i'm pretty sure the switch is supposed to break the circuit and uh there is no continuity between any terminal on the switch and any of the power lines here. So, uh, that means if the switch is, uh, actually breaks the circuit, the power from somewhere in between there. Which means I'm making progress. I was noticing this thing was powering up and shutting off when I first plugged it in, so I'm thinking even more electrolytics. We know the filter is good, because it seems to charge up and work fine. I'm going through and I'm doing the little sound test thing. And, uh... So, I've marked this one off because it sounds all crackly, which I'm assuming that means it's leaking. Which we can actually pull these out and test these since I actually got the tester now. Uh... Man, all these electrolytics are sounding crispy. That one ain't as bad, but it still sounds crispy. And believe it or not, this one, uh, well, I had this one marked as blue because it's a maybe. Because it doesn't sound crisp, crispy, it sounds just not there. That's all we get. Oh yeah, and th this guy, you know, this guy being a drop, maybe it's not meant to work on low voltage, but it sounds kind of fucked up too. Very, actually. See what I know. I got a couple other ones marked in red, I, I, but not all these electrolytics are the same story. Although I, I'm, I'm having, I can't test ones that don't have a uh, clippable leads on low power. See, that sounds great. That that's what they should sound like. 
Actually, you know what? Some of these are actually connected to the ground, so I could do this. Yeah, that's with the filtering. And what out? Now this goes entirely through something else, so the clip here will have to... That sounds great. That's what it's supposed to do. You can hear all that bass comes back without it. And yes, this is what I call music, so fuck you if you don't like it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm a... I might be attacking the wrong problem here, but probably should be attacked either way. And who knows, maybe I was having those horizontal, those weird horizontal issues due to the capacitors and the horizontal circuit drying up, so... I'm about done here, but you know, this thing has the ability to test capacitors in circuit to, to roughly tell if they're alright, but I bear, I belt, don't remember how to do it, and I, honestly, that's the whole reason I'm not. Kind of a bad excuse. I guess I'm glad I'm checking the neck board. That's what we should sound like. Here's the capacitor. That's not good at all. <laughs> it's not. Well, I guess its value could be large as far as filtering out the lows go, but it shouldn't be cracking like that. I thought these orange drop caps are supposed to be indestructible. Maybe this isn't a valid test for the high voltage ones or something, but barely anything's coming out of there. This one's got power, but it seems like bad. But I thought the, the, these guys were supposed to be like the most reliable out there. Back when I used to actually buy shit new and Radio Shack existed, at least in State College. Uh, so that got that. I pulled this one out of a board. This one is a maybe because it's a closed value. Uh, it's a one at 50 volts, which I'm looking for a 1.5. But uh, I want to see if I can find a 1.5 at 100. Cause yeah, the voltage and the capacitance is both off. And we, I need to find a 47 to 25, and that's been, or no, I did just find that, yeah, so I need to find a 22 at 35. And this is the deflection and horizontal board for the Sony monitor to, to your left over there. Uh, and it's an all Japanese board, so it's probably going to have some pretty good capacitors to pull from it, so. And I wanted to go from a, a deflection board, because it should have some higher voltages than uh, the like, audio boards and shit I've been looking at. So I needed to find a capacitor rated at 1.5 microfarad at 100 volts. Could not find a 1.5, found similar values, couldn't find anything above 50 volts. So I'm using some series stringing technology here. And we got a 4.7s uh, and a 50 volt. So that's gonna be a total of 150 volt, uh, which that would be 1.56666 theoretical uh, microfarads. We got our, on the capacitor tester here, We've got it set to the uh, uh, the one division, and we're at about one point four and a half. So we're pretty close to our target of one point five. We're basically there. So uh, I just got to solder these guys together. Okay, so also uh, we can do that little leakage test. So we're already in charge mode for the electrolytic DC volts. We got our little warning light on. And let's uh, take her up to 150. Oh, we got a little bit of eye changeage there. Uh, looks like we've lost a little bit of capacitance. Take her voltage off. Watch that decrease. Huh, looks like we have a little bit of a change there. But the eye didn't close. Yeah, just that for maximum mileage. Open. Or. Eh. I'd call that good. There we go. One 150 volt, 1.5 microfarad capacitor. So I now know what the NP means in this capacitor non polarized. 
So I done fucked up. I made that for nothing. I made that for nothing. I got a feeling I'm not going to find any capacitors that have their value written directly on them. So uh, I'm going to be looking for a 155 capacitor. That's my little figure it out chart. So I'm looking for a uh, a one a 1.5 million picofarad. If I got that right, or thought, wait, am I thinking that right? I think I think I know that right. Fuck, I'm tired. Yeah, I was thinking of it wrong. That's what it would translate to in farads. Uh, so, uh, uh, that's what I'm looking for. A thousand five hundred picofarad would be 1.5 microfarad. So I need a 152 capacitor. That, I don't, that doesn't sound like a number I've seen much, so I might not find one. Here on this neck board, we've got two, uh, we, we've got two 102s, so that would be a one microfarad, if I am thinking correctly. So that, that could be a close fallback value. So, 152 was a value I know I've never seen before, so I went for translating the, uh, the, the I'm tired value that was made of parts out. So I've got a 472 is the value I want, and I found some disc caps, which I know they change when they heat up, but uh, that's just going to be too fucking bad, because that's what it's getting. And we're going to see how, I don't know their voltage rating, so we're just going to do our leakage test on the cap tester. I was testing some capacitors just for fun, and this one's above the meter scale. The meter can't do anything. Oh wait, no, am I at 100 picofarad? Whoopsies. Man, I am tired. Well, yeah, so... Well, no, 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 no. No, I, yeah, that's right. No, I meant microfarad. Yes, this thing only goes up to 100 microfarad, but this is a 220 microfarad, so... Whoop. And I've spent way too many hours dicking around capacitors. I actually uh, have been able to find very few uh, ceramic capacitors that pass my sound test. Maybe you can't do that test on ceramics. But either way, fuck the neck board capacitor. Nothing critical is going to happen on the neck board that a capacitor is going to throw off. Who knows, maybe that could be my uh, little contrast issue or something there. But uh, not fucking worth the effort. So... We're just going to replace the other ones. Oh, and I can't believe I went through the effort of making this piece of polarized shit. <laughs> it was all the circuit making these capacitors sound crappy. All the ones I pulled out test, uh, they sound perfectly fine out of circuit. And the ones I put in the circuit sound like shit. So, that's an entire day wasted. It's about 1am. I'm really tired. I've been up since 4 in the morning. But, uh, I don't want to go to bed without this working. I'm going to try tapping up every even slightly questionable solder joint on here. I'm going to go like, and I'm going to carefully inspect everything. And the slightest little bald spot or crack is getting re, uh, redone with fresh solder. Because this thing, it has to work. It has to work. It has to work. This might not be as lost of a cause as I initially thought. I don't know if you can see, but that looks like that is completely free of connection to the emitter in this transistor here. Uh, huh. Alright, I'm going to keep inspecting this thing and repairing. Found a sketchy wire over here and I got a nice blob of solder on it going over to the next one. Okay, so I repaired my connections there. That's what it looks like now. And that's right next to the flyback. Look on the other side. It's mounted on a heat sink, which I was expecting to be straight in line because it being one of those slat packages. But that is the horizontal output transistor. I was having problems with the power coming on and off and problems with horizontal deflection. So, it's a good probability. I just fixed my problem. But I'm going to go through and check a whole bunch of other stuff too because that's probably there's probably more things hidden here that are just that bad. And if you've made it this far and you think you might have solder joint problems, for the love of God, don't reflow it. For the love of God, don't reflow it. That's how my old one died, because I tried reflowing it like everything else. And I don't have many parts left, but you see how that, uh, that's the old flyback transformer from the one I reflowed years ago? And yet, yeah, basically everything in the PCB did that. They weren't meant to handle high temperatures like newer stuff is. Don't reflow or it's going to be dead. You got to tack all this stuff on by hand and inspect it yourself the old fashioned way or you're going to lose a monitor. Don't be me. 
Got a little bit of call it solid core wire, not even copper, but the solder still six, sticks to it. Uh, we got a bridged connection where the PCB lifted up for the audio terminal. Gonna just use our ghetto flush cutters, which these are actually uh, fingernail clippers. You can get these at a pharmacy or something like that. Uh, they sell them there. These are or the weird toenail clippers or whatever. They work great as flush cutters. And I've been using them for more than 10 years, so, and they're still working, so they're not bad. <laughs> oh, I feel so fucking foolish. I did all that shit. I did all that. I feel so amateur now. Uh, and it's not put together. Uh. Oh, it works now. Uh. Now I'm sure that horizontal problem is lessened or is gone. I'm going to put this thing back together. I wish I could find service information on it because one of the controls I touched, I tried to put them all back in the original position, but I touched the B plus voltage control. I don't know what the B plus voltage is supposed to be at. I couldn't find any service information on this. Uh, so uh, it's, it works now. So uh, lesson learned, don't jump ahead of yourself. The first problem I suspected was solder joints, and that's what it was. I got all ahead of myself thinking, oh, the capacitors, it's always the capacitors, it's the fucking capacitors. But no, this monitor's solder joints is its issue. So, and uh, maybe I don't understand the Shango method, but it sure didn't work well for me testing stuff in circuit. Everything I tested in circuit sounded bad and came good out of it. So, the end is, uh, we're going to... I guess I'll let this video go on a little bit longer, but we're going to fire up the old capacitor tester and check out all the old caps I marked bad and see how they come out on here. Alright, hopefully that will give you a somewhat decent view. I think you can see the eye from there. Alright, so we're going to test. So I marked the ones at red paint. The ones I was like, okay, that sounds fucked up. So, okay, that's properly connected now. What's your value? Six or Ten microfarad. Let's see how close you are. I bet you can be right in the money. So let's go to the... Uh scale that would be appropriate for 10 microfarad wait what all right Is that a... and let's see we're on the one microfarad scale and we're reading uh nine point three microfarad that's a little off I don't know what the tolerance is on here though all right now we're gonna we're gonna check out this uh this 35 or 22 microfarad at 35 volts oh we didn't even do the leakage test actually so this is a uh, 22 at 35 so we're gonna you gotta be up in this scale I ain't gonna Okay, we got a nice wide eye opening there. Huh. It's overloading the camera. So you can't see how Fuck! Oh, it almost hit me in the foot. My flashlight's really heavy. It really hurts when the thing hits you in the foot. Got a nice wide eye opening. Uh, we're supposed to be able to do 35 volts. 35 volts were pretty hard to read in there. Let's just do it anyways. Yellow charge, DC volts. Gonna just ease into it. We'll call it a day at 50. Yeah, it holds its value. Alright, off, off. Alright, let's see, uh, how... Ye old slightly off goes. Uh, you're only at 16 volts. I don't care. I'm just chucking you right in the damn trash. And for fun, let's test this guy, which I had in a at the bottom of my. It was at the bottom of my box of scrap circuit boards, and it looked cool as hell. I don't know. I think that red capacitor looks really cool. So. If you go to your scrap circuit board box and you think a capacitor looks cool, you might not be a redneck. Uh, well, what's your values at? Uh, you're a 50 volt 4.7. So let's go down to the 
already in the one scale. Or no, we know you need to go down to the one scale. Gotta play with the gotta play with the knob down here till this opens up as much as it's gonna open. Then we're gonna play with this till this opens up as much as it's gonna open. Nah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so uh yeah, we're reading uh we're supposed to be at 47, I think, or 4.7. Was that right? My brain's... I'm so tired, my memory isn't working, and I can't... I think 4.7 is what it was. Okay, 4.7 microfarad. And we're at... 4.4. Uh, so that's not too bad off. Let's give her the old leakage test. So we're going to go back to charge. We're going to go to DC volts. Well, let's, wa let's watch the eye when it does that. Oh yeah. We got a little voltmeter on here. Fucking love this thing. And now that we're going to shut down, let's just reset everything. Well, that's what I call reset. I, keep, I like to keep the voltage off, the voltage power off, and that on not charge mode. So no zappy zap. That's the safe way to operate it. You know, I feel so amateurish from uh, making such a simple mistake. Uh, oh, I, actually, I can't put this thing together yet. The yoke's crooked. The yoke was put on crooked. But, uh, yeah, I, I really should have seen this coming, especially the horizontal output transistor. Zister, that's a heat sinked item, and two things make solder joints fail. Stress and temperature changes, because that makes expansions and contractions. What gets hotter than the fucking... Actually, I'm surprised I didn't find anything along the flyback. I guess the flyback's been running nice and cool. That is what I call a good-looking image. Now, let's go to our color bars and see if the circle looks screwed up. It does not. It has a little bit of linearity issue, though. It does. I can deal with that. You won't even notice that. That's minor... Yeah, that's actually looking pretty good. Now, there's one more thing I'd like to know if, uh, yeah, if anybody knows their shit and they're watching this, what would I have to do to increase the amount of contrast? Because maximum contrast does not satisfy me. If I crank, like, the brights are not bright enough, but if I make, like, see, uh, if I turn the brightness, eh, that's not what I want. I want more contrast. How do I increase the contrast level? Hmm. Now I have a theory here that I t see whatever variable resistor this has and I replace that with a higher value one or find some other resistor in the circuit and increase its value because I'm assuming I am opening or am I closing? I'd have to test that out. I think I'm opening. I'm assuming that this is closed and this is open. I'll save that for another time though. This video is over. Well, I guess we'll do a little test play. It would seem that I have like a horizontal linearity problem still. The circle's a bit lopsided. This half of the image, perfect. And that half, circle's a little bit fat. It's hanging over too far. But uh, it looks great in game. You don't notice that linearity problem. But yeah, yeah, look at this grid. This grid's all crushed compared to this one. Welcome to how I played video games at 14. What, what? The GameCube was like the only game system I ever had when it was actually the relevant system at the time. What? What? That was weird. Don't know why I did that. Yeah, see, look, that looks great there. You can't even tell the linearity issues going on. So, I'm gonna take it. This satisfies me. Circles look fine.
we want to we want a quick and rough game so we're going to do a quick game and it's going to put us in that I thought I hit a quick game and this is going to automatically set up bots it's going to put us in that little fucking box place where the RPG is in the center come on oh it actually put us somewhere different then we're going to quit I just do that because it automatically sets up bots. So if you want to have a really good game, you have four people over, go to arena after you've done that. The best map is the first map. I have a... Wait, where's party? Can I play as party? No, I can't. Oh, that sucks. No, I want to be party. I don't know why it didn't give me the option. Oh, that's right. Okay, there we go. Party, because that has all my cheat codes. Party is a cheat code. So we're gonna go to Arena, Skyroll, Bond. Uh, I don't care. P uh, <gasps> random, because that makes it awesome. Uh, random on. Uh, I guess I don't have that in this code name. Random on. For the most exciting gameplay. This is one of the best first person shooters of all time. Uh, in fact, it might be my favorite. I love this game. As far as multiplayer, play your friends game goes, this is the best multi uh, first person shooter of all time. Although, now there's going to be a lot of explosions because everybody has grenades. And I'm playing with one hand. Man, I've always wanted a, I've always wanted a green screen phosphor. Wait, what the hell? Why is my... Okay. My axis wasn't inverted. It's doing a crappy job remembering my controls. And I'm doing a crappy job playing with one hand. Almost got my ass blowed up. Ugh. You know, I can do this on a DualShock 3. I cannot do this on a GameCube controller. I have this game on PlayStation 2 as well, but I didn't have a PlayStation 2 back then. Ugh. Come here, bitch. Semi-automatic burst! And I even have a convenient box to keep all my spare parts in. This is a win-win. And I can put that Computer Monitor 80 box on top of my IBM PCXT box. Where's my PCXT box? Oh wait, it's got a it's got a record player on it. Or, yeah, it's got a record player on it because it's a really light record player. There's my PCXT box. Right down there, you can see the computer inside of it, kind of. Fun fact for you in this video, did you know if you, oh hey look, here's the knobs to the monitor. I don't even know how they got on here. That's uh, to the, I uh, probably want to stick that apart and explain how that got down there. Did you know if you fully upgrade to 5160, it actually becomes a 5169?